Hi everybody. In this video I wanted to demonstrate how it is possible to perform median regression using SPSS through its quantile regression function. And from what I understand this is a fairly new uh, function that has been added to SPSS. So it's fairly new to the new on the scene so to speak. Um, I do want to mention that I do not commonly perform this type of analysis. Um, however, I, I actually find it rather fascinating and so I thought I would uh, spend a little bit of time just showing you um, how it can be carried out and a bit on how you might interpret uh, median regression results. And certainly in the future, I plan on adding some additional videos related to quantile regression. Now before we get started, I do want to mention that underneath the video description, you will find uh, a couple of links. The first link will be to this SPSS data file, and the second one will be to an Excel file that I've uh, put together and that I'll show you in this video. So what we're going to start off with is... Um, performing just a least squares regression uh, and then we'll uh, proceed to running a median regression. And so imagine we have student data and where we have measures of achievement, performance goals, mastery goals, interest, anxiety, and there's a gender ID variable which is coded zero where the person identifies as male and one for identifies as female. And uh, what I'm going to do is just run a basic regression analysis, a least squares regression, by uh, going through the regression menu right here, go to linear, we'll put achievement in the dependent variable box, and we'll put performance goals, mastery, interest, anxiety, and gender ID in the independent variables box. And I'm going to keep this really simple and just run uh, this analysis. And you can see that uh, we have an R-square value of 0.412. And you can see by virtue of our analysis of variance uh, test that um, our R-square uh, would be deemed statistically significant. So we would infer that the population R-square is greater than zero. When we look at the individual regression coefficients, there's our uh, intercept right there. Uh, we see performance goals um, has a negative regression slope it is statistically significant. We have mastery and interest. Both of these have positive regression slopes. Both of those are statistically significant in the model. Then we have anxiety and gender ID uh, and both of those predictors, um, although the coefficients are negative, they neither of them are statistically significant. So now let's rerun the analysis, but we're going to use um, the quantile regression function to perform a median regression. And one of the reasons why we might choose uh, to run a median regression is uh, if in those cases where maybe we have some outliers with respect to our uh, dependent variable. And so it can increase our residuals or increase the size of some of our residuals and can maybe per, uh, perhaps uh, create some problems with respect to uh, heteroscedasticity. Now I do want to mention too that another reason why you might choose uh, quantile regression and which to me is probably the more interesting reason to do it is uh, in order to specifically address problems with potential heteroscedasticity by modeling the relationship between your predictor variables and your uh, dependent variable at different quantiles on the dependent variable. And what that means is, is that we, are, we, we would then be testing whether the relationships between our predictors and our dependent variable change across levels of our dependent variable. So that's probably one of the more interesting reasons why we might choose to use quantile regression in general. But for this demonstration, we're going to keep it simple and just run a median regression. So to do this, we're going to go to Analyze, go to Regression, and then down at the bottom you'll see it says Quantile. So I'm going to click on that, and uh, I'll just kind of reset this. And what we'll do is we'll move the Achievement variable to the Target variable box, and I'll move uh, our uh, predictor variables over to the covariates. And because gender ID is a binary variable, um, it's, it's totally permissible to include this as a covariate within our model. Um, now, under criteria, we'll click on that, and you'll see that it says quantile values, and the default right now is uh, 0.5, and that's going to be the median of our uh, distribution. If we, if we talk about um, 
the 0.5, the 50th percentile, that's the median for our, our distribution. And so what we're basically going to be doing is modeling conditional medians as a function of our predictors. So in least squares regression, you're modeling, uh, you're, you're essentially trying to um, predict conditional means uh, on the dependent variable. So in the, the case of quantile regression, you are uh, essentially modeling conditional medians as a function of the predictors. So we'll go ahead and click on continue and then on OK. And so in terms of the output, you'll notice at the top it says model quality and it says pseudo R square. Um, so this is not the same thing as the least squares um, uh, R square value. So the pseudo is just kind of a rough analogy, if you will, for um, for uh, uh, the R square value. And then down below, you'll see it also says mean absolute error. And so this is basically uh, the the computed average of the absolute value of the residuals that are computed uh, from the regression. And so we can take both of these two indices as um, as indicators related to model fit. So now if you're curious about where the pseudo R square is coming from, it's really easily computed. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I'm going to rerun the analysis, go back to quantile, and I'm going to remove all of the predictor variables. And so in this case, when I run the model, it's just going to be an intercept only model or a null model. And so when I try to run it, it says no effects have been specified. Therefore, an intercept only model will be fit. And so I'm going to say yes right here. And now you can see that the mean absolute error is 1.060714. So basically, it's like this. If I and what this is where the um, my Excel file comes into play. So you can see right here, this is the 1.060714. 1 that's from our null model. That's the mean absolute error again. And then the mean absolute error for our full model was 0 0.770742. So I can compute that pseudo R square by using this particular formula right here, where I'm basically taking uh, the mean absolute error from the null model and subtracting uh, the mean absolute error for from uh, the uh, full model. Uh, so I'm taking that difference and then dividing that difference by the mean absolute error for the null model. So what that gives me essentially is the proportionate reduction in error, uh, which is essentially also reflecting the increase in model fit as a result of adding in the predictor variables. So that's pretty cool, right? So now let's go back to our uh, full model and look at the individual predictors. And so in this particular case, you can see again, there's our intercept. Um, but in this case, this would be the uh, predicted uh, median, uh, assuming our predictors are all zero. Um, and then we've got our uh, performance goal. There's a negative slope there. And you can see it's not statistically significant at the uh, standard 0 0.05 level. Uh, you can see we have mastery and interest. Both of those have positive regression slopes. Both of those are um, are statistically significant at the 0 0.05 level. And then again, gender and anxiety. Both of those have negative slopes, and both of those though are not statistically significant. Now, if if it's the case that you are interested in uh, assessing relative um, the relative contributions of the predictors, um, then one possibility is um, something that I just have kind of come up with, and that is to essentially evaluate the fit of the model um, w uh, after removing a predictor relative to the full model. Now, to be clear, I uh, this is something that I've come up with. This is not something I've read, but it seemed rather intuitive given what we've just talked about in terms of uh, the comparison between the intercept only model and uh, the full model. So what I ended up doing uh, in the Excel file that you see right here is I reran uh, the regression model, the full model, but removing one of the predictors at a time. So you can see right here, uh, the first model I removed performance goals, uh, which led to an MAE of 0.794. And this is the pseudo R square for that particular model. And uh, then over here, this is the percentage change in fit 
uh, relative to the full model as a result of removing uh, the predictor variable. So if you look right here, uh, essentially you can see that I've got uh, a comparison here. So if I take the uh, MAE from the full model and subtract the MAE associated with the model after removing uh, the performance goal variable and then dividing it by or dividing that difference by the MAE for the full model I get a produ uh, percentage reduction in fit um, obviously after multiplying this by 100 percent so that would be a percentage change in uh, fit as a result of removing the predictor which is essentially corresponding to, to a percentage increase in the MAE uh, after removing the predictor so if we uh, look at the um, absolute values for each of these um, um, in, uh, these um, indices right here. You you can then kind of ascertain which uh, predictors were contributing most to that full model. And so you can see that the predictor that was in that was contributing most was the interest predictor because if I remove it, it would result in the greatest percentage of change in fit. Uh, the next largest uh, predictor would be the mastery. Uh, with the next uh, greatest um, percentage change if that if that predictor was removed um, and so forth so that's kind of how I'm how I've kind of thought about uh, this particular problem of assessing relative um, contributions to the full model so at any rate uh, that is my uh, presentation in a nutshell again this is sort of my first stab at uh, this particular topic it's not something that I uh, typically do in my own research but again I just found it pretty fascinating and it's something that I hope to share uh, more with you as I uh, learn more about this topic so uh, I appreciate you watching